In the previous video, we computed a list of boundary nodes and we computed a list of internal nodes as well. Now, what is the next step? We have to find a list of unsatisfied nodes so that we can move to a new location one by one. Now, how do we get a list of unsatisfied, unsatisfied nodes? So basically, we will take all the nodes from G dot nodes one by one and we will test whether they are unsatisfied or not. Now, how do we do that? We need to get a list of neighbors of that node. If it is a boundary node, it will have a different set of neighbors. If it is an internal node, it will have a different set of neighbors. So uh, the first step is to get a list of neighbors for the given node. So we might need to create two functions for that. One function uh, for getting a list of uh, neighbors if the node is a boundary node and another function for getting a list of neighbors if the node is an internal node. Now let me show you how we can do that. Um, let me comment this. Uh, I, want, I want the previous version of the graph here. So uh, let me show you that once. Uh, I'll just uh, draw the graph uh, the normal way here. So I'll write nx.draw g and uh, position also I want to pass and then plt.show now let's see what we get okay yeah so see if it is an internal node for example let's take the case of uh, 4 comma 5 now what are its neighbors 4 comma 5 has 8 neighbors now what are these the left one that is 3 comma 5 the right one that is 5 comma 5 the bottom one the top one now how do we get them so given a node u comma v how do we get the neighbors u comma v will have a neighbor which is u minus 1 comma v it will have a neighbor which is u plus 1 comma v it will have a neighbor which is u comma v plus 1 it will have another neighbor which will be u comma v minus 1 now uh, next come the diagonal nodes so uh, they will be u minus 1 comma v plus 1 u plus 1 comma v minus 1 u plus 1 comma v plus 1 u minus 1 comma v minus 1 so whatever i told you are going to be the neighbors of an internal node which is u comma v so that was about the internal nodes so we can uh, write a function where we pass u comma v and we get a list of all the uh, neighbors now, if the node is a boundary node, uh, it will have different set of neighbors. So we need to create a separate function for that. Now, in case, uh, again, there are two kinds of boundary nodes. Uh, the nodes which are in the corner, the four uh, nodes, and uh, the rest of the nodes. Now, again, uh, there will be special cases there. If the node is 0, 0, I don't think we can generalize that. Uh, so I think we would have to do that case by case. So if the node is 0, 0, uh, its neighbors will be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. If the node is uh, 9, 0. So if you want to generalize, you can just write if the uh, node is n minus 1, 0. So you remember we passed n is equal to 10 here. So n minus 1, 0 is going to be a corner node. Similarly, n minus 1, n minus 1 is going to be another corner node and 0 comma n minus 1 co is going to be another corner node now these are uh, four special cases for which the neighbors are going to be only three so we can write the special cases there the rest of the boundary nodes are uh, these ones uh, so one uh, list of uh, one chunk of boundary nodes are going to be the ones where u is equal to zero right and in those cases, the boundary, the, the neighbors are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so if it is 0, comma, v, it will be 0, comma, v plus 1, 0, comma, v minus 1, uh, 1, comma, uh, v plus 1, 1, comma, v, 1, comma, v minus 1. You see how I am doing that. I think you can do that for the rest of the cases as well. Let me give you one more example. <clears throat> So if it is uh, <coughs> if it is uh, amongst the nodes um, where uh, v is equal to n minus one, as you can see, it'll uh, it'll give uh, us this uh, row of uh, boundary nodes, right? So again, in those cases, you can write the uh, the the neighbors that are going to be there, and this is going to be the 
the row where u is equal to n minus 1 and this is going to be the row where v is equal to 0. So you can write all those special cases and you can get a list of uh, the neighbors for the given boundary node. Okay, let's go back. Now, uh, to save time, I've already written all the cases so that we don't spend a lot of time in the video making. So, let me show you, uh, although I've already explained to you. So, this is a function, uh, get neighbors for an internal node. So, we're passing u, comma v and for an internal node, uh, the cases are very straightforward. So, you can uh, completely generalize uh, it. So, you're, you're returning a list there. Uh, which is having all the eight neighbors. So that's straightforward. Another function that uh, I've created already is for getting a list of neighbors for a boundary node. As I told you, there are one, two, three, four, eight cases. So uh, this you can skip. So there are this also I'll comment. So you see there are eight cases here. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Uh, okay, eight cases. All the cases are there. Uh, as I told you. Uh, first four cases are the ones for the corner nodes and the rest four cases are the ones for the rest of the boundary nodes. So I don't think I need to explain uh, uh, much there. Uh, in fact, I would like you to try yourself. Um, in case you need help, you can just check the values here. Uh, so these are all possible values. Uh, you can just open the graph the way I opened and then you can note down uh, the neighbors that are going to be there that, that should be simple to do now we have to get a list of unsatisfied nodes so we'll create a function for that we'll write um, get unsatisfied nodes uh, list uh, let's pass the graph here now we'll check all the nodes one by one and we will check how many neighbors of the given node have the same type as the as the type of the given node right so let's create a list unsatisfied nodes list okay empty initially now we have to check for each node so we'll write for u comma v n g dot nodes okay we have to uh, keep a note of the type of this uh, node that is uv so we can write type of this node because we'll be comparing right type of this node is equal to g dot uh, node uh, we have to see the type of uv so we'll write uv and then type here okay that should give us the type of the node so we have stored here in case the type of this node is equal to empty, what are we going to do? We basically don't have to do anything. Uh, as in, if the type of this node is equal to 0, uh, we, it can never be unsatisfied, right? So we'll just continue and we'll check the next node. So we'll write uh, if type of this node is equal to 0, we'll just continue and check the next node. Else, okay, else what are we going to do? We are going to see in the list of neighbors of this node how many nodes are uh, having a similar type as this node's type. So we'll have to keep a track of that. So we'll write similar nodes is equal to zero initially. Now we have to check whether this this node UV is a internal node or is it a boundary node because accordingly we'll get the list of neighbors. So we have to check here. Now, how do we check whether a node is internal node or boundary node? We have already created a list of inter, uh, internal nodes and boundary nodes here, right? So it will be nice if we pass this these lists into the function um, boundary nodes list. So we'll pass these two lists in the function and We'll pass these lists and we'll check whether the node belongs to uh, this list or not. That will tell us whether the node is a boundary node or internal node. Internal nodes list. Okay. So, what we are going to do here, we will check if u, v sorry, in 
internal nodes list which which will mean that it, it is an internal node uh, then its neighbor so we have to get all its neighbors how do we get its neighbors we have already created a function for getting the neighbors of an internal node so right get, uh, get neighbors for internal right so we're going to pass the node here okay in case uh, this uv is not in internal nodes list it will uh, obviously be in the other list uh, that is boundary nodes list so we'll write lf u comma v in boundary nodes list what do we do now we get a list of neighbors again we have created a function for that get a neighbor of boundary right uh, for boundary yeah. get neighbor for boundary and we will pass the node here uv okay so we now got a list of neighbors what do we uh, have to do now we have to check amongst these neighbors how many of them are having the same type as the type of this node that is uh, what we have stored already okay so we'll start a loop for uh, all the nodes in the neighbor so we'll write for each in neighbor if g dot node so we have to uh, check the type of each so i'll write Okay, uh, if sorry, if this is equal to type of this node, uh, we, uh, we we have to increment the counter. That is, uh, we already initialized right. Similar nodes plus is equal to one. So number of similar nodes nodes will uh, be incremented. After this loop is over, we will have a count of the similar nodes. So if that similar nodes is less than equal to the threshold. So maybe you can uh, initialize the threshold here. Maybe t is equal to three. I'll write here. So if the same number of similar nodes is less than or equal to t, uh, which would mean that uh, the node is unsatisfied. So we will add this append this node to the list of unsatisfied nodes. So we'll write answer the node list dot append ub ub and uh, this function is going to return uh, the list of unsatisfied nodes. I'll write return uh, unsatisfied nodes list. Okay. Now let's call this function here. So we will write unsatisfied nodes list is equal to get unsatisfied nor a nodes list, and the parameters are going to be the graph and internal nodes list and boundary nodes list yeah in order to verify let us print uh, whether it works or it works fine or not so i'll print unsatisfied nodes list uh, let me comment this i don't want to see them okay so let's see um so this is the graph okay we are getting a list of unsatisfied nodes here so we are doing good now what do we have to do after getting a list of unsatisfied nodes we have to take the nodes uh, take one of the unsatisfied nodes and we have to move it to a new place now that new place should be empty right so we also have to keep a track of the empty places uh, we initially did that we kept a list of empty cells so that we have already so what we'll do is let's go back what we'll do is from this list of unsatisfied nodes we will choose one node randomly from the list of empty cells we will choose one place randomly we uh, and then we will put the randomly chosen node from the unsatisfied list into this randomly chosen position from the empty cells and after that obviously the number of unsatisfied and satisfied nodes will change so the graph uh, will actually change uh, after that we will recompute all the values that is unsatisfied empty satisfied everything will be recomputed and then we'll see how the graph looks like uh, this we will keep on repeating for several iterations uh, and in the end we will compare how we are how the graph is looking like and how the graph was looking like initially so uh, as i said the next step is to make a node satisfied um, we can create a function for that um, make a node satisfied what do we need to pass there we obviously need to pass the list of unsatisfied nodes because we will randomly choose one out of that 
and second thing that has to be passed is the uh, empty cells list because we will randomly choose one uh, position out of that i think this is uh, good so in the next video we will uh, implement this function make a node satisfied uh, 